Hi everyone, it's Nicole here from Baby to Sleep. Um, we are on location today. I'm actually in Costa, uh, which is um, a bit of a change up. Last week, Saturday morning, we're sitting in the car while we wait for the girls between classes. And this week I thought, oh, do you know what? I've got some time, I'll pop into Costa and have a brew and then I'll talk to you all then. Um, so I've got about 20 minutes or so before I pick Sophia up from drama. So let's see how we get on. Um, so we've had some um, changes. Oh, very quickly, so this is part 10. <laughs> we've done night eight and there are improvements, but you'll, you'll find them a bit odd, but I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but we've decided we have to move a little bit quicker than I initially planned. Um, whereas, yes, okay, Alicia was showing that she could climb out of the cot and everything was absolutely fine. She wasn't actually doing it, so that was okay until yesterday um, when I basically, I nipped downstairs to grab something, came back up, walked into the living um, into the bedroom and I could hear her going, cowpole, cowpole. And I literally walked in and you know when you see them, on the actual bar, both legs were up. It was like, um, as if she was like them sitting on top of the bar, like a monkey really, I suppose, hanging there, literally about to throw the second leg over and go out the back. And I basically absolutely panicked. I was like, no, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fair old drop, isn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, and, and since then she keeps on trying to do it. So I'm constant, we can't, I can't leave her for a second anymore now. Um, so yes, uh, <laughs> husband is not going to have uh, much choice in waiting anymore because I need to get this bed built so we can do what my plan was <laughs> and not what his plan is. Um, so we need to get a crack on with that. So as soon as she's in nursery on Tuesday, that bed will be getting built. Um, and then hopefully we can start working on that transition. So on to um, how last night went. Um, we only had one wake up, which is brilliant. Um, the thing is that one wake up lasted about an hour. Well, and when I say an hour, it wasn't so much that she was awake for the hour or it was bothering me or she was crying for an hour. It was that she'd woken up about three o'clock. Um, she was a bit snotty um, and she woke up crying. I gave her a cuddle, she went back down. Just as I'm falling back to sleep, she starts crying again. And this went on for about an hour um, until she finally fell asleep. And towards the end of the hour, I was like, okay, she sounds really snotty here. So I just basically popped, so gave her some cowpaw and popped some baby fix on her chest and her feet. Um, and she seemed to settle then. She kind of was like, yay. And I was like, okay, brilliant. And obviously using that positive reinforcement, you're doing really, really well. You're doing absolutely amazing. You're such a big girl. You're doing amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Um, she basically went back down and she went to sleep and that was it till 20 past six. So even though it was one wake up and it was quite a long one, it wasn't like it was traumatic. It was more the fact it was a struggle for her. And interestingly, so yesterday's nap was a, a decent nap and I thought I was going to be pushing her closer to a normal kind of seven o'clock bedtime. She seems to be stuck on six. She doesn't like going past six. She likes to do six till six. Um, but that's not going to work when she's in with Sophia because Sophia tends to go to bed about half past seven and I'm working on Sophia getting up at seven. So it's not going to work if I've got one likes to get up at six and one that gets up at seven. So I've got the full body clock shift to do with that as well. Um, but there was me yesterday thinking I was going to be able to get her to a seven o'clock bedtime. No, nope, not at all. So she'd not woken, I think she's about quarter to two, she'd woken up from that two hour nap. And um, basically her behavior was very much telling me she needed to go to bed, which hugely surprised me. And when I said to her, Alicia, I said, do you want to go to bed? Are you tired? She went, bed. And she got really excited and she legged it to the stairs. So I was like, okay, she wants to go to bed. So she was in bed for six o'clock by her choice. Um, and so, yeah, it's, you've got to think it's three o'clock in the morning. She slept for nine hours. It's extremely difficult to go back to sleep. If any of you have worked with me before or you've seen any of my videos that I do, you'll know about how I talk about the sleep changing. Second half of the night is much harder to go back to sleep for the type <coughs> of sleep it is biologically. Um, so it's, it's very, very difficult. So she struggled, but she did it. She did it all herself. She didn't really need my help. Just a little bit of input every now and then. Um, and that was it till morning. So it wasn't actually too bad at all. Um, and she's happy as Larry this morning. So it's all good. But talking of positive reinforcement um, and using these positive strategies to help our little ones. Now, Alicia has an issue with me brushing her teeth. She has never let me brush her teeth and she does not let me brush her hair. She just, she'll have daddy brush her teeth, she'll have daddy brush her hair, but not me. And I know there's probably loads of you out there going, my kid does the same. They seem to have a preference, one parent over the other, one parent can put them to bed, I can't do it, the other one can. Um, and it's, it's totally and utterly normal. 
But what I've started doing is because since we've started making these transitions, and granted it has only been a week um, since we've started working on these changes, the language that I use with her, because now I actually really get how much she understands, the language that I use with her has changed a lot as well. Um, so I'm, I'm noticing that by actually saying, well done, you're such a big girl, you're doing so well, all these types of things, they actually are having such a positive effect. So rather than it just been about sleep, I've taken those particular phrases and I've tripped and moved them into normal things that she doesn't like me doing. So uh, brushing your teeth, for example, um, are you going to show mommy what a big girl you are and let mommy brush your teeth? And literally, as soon as that toothbrush goes into her mouth, rather than waiting a minute and then saying, well done, literally, as soon as it goes into her mouth, Praise, 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 praise. Wow, you're so good. You're such a big girl. Aren't you amazing for letting mommy brush your teeth? You are doing so well. And now it's like she's there, she's going ee, and she's showing me all her teeth and she's going ah, and she's loving it and she thinks it's fantastic. And this is in less than a week um, that we've been doing this with her and she's quite happy for me to brush her teeth now. She let me brush her hair this morning, no problem, because we're using the same sorts of strategies. So if there is anything that you are finding that is a bit of a battle with your little one, rather than fighting them on it, actually switch it and just praise, 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 praise. Keep it going because the, our children literally crave um, any type of attention from us. And if they're getting negative attention, if we're chasing them around because they won't let us do something, they're gonna continue with that behavior. If we can actually switch it around and say, you're doing an incredible job, you're doing amazing, and they're getting that attention for doing something good, they're gonna continue with that as well, but we've got to continue with that praise. Um, but we will get much better results from the positive reinforcement from, come here, come here, let me do your hair, come on, just let me do your teeth, just this once, come on, you're doing absolutely fine. And we've all done it. So it's not just me, and I know that, we're all exactly the same, we're all guilty of it, we just need to get the job done. But actually, if we can think of it in a different way, um, that job will get done quicker, less stressful, and because more of a regular thing without the stress as well. Um, so that's just a little bit about the positive reinforcement side. And the other thing, I just want to talk about um, the breastfeeding side of things because and obviously we are going down to the night winning. Again, we had just the one feed in the last 24 hours and that was this morning. And it's the one that I really am looking forward to getting rid of. And that might sound like a really strange thing to say, but in the last week, um, since we've been weaning off and cutting down so we got rid of the night feeds then obviously we had the accidental get rid of the bedtime feeds reintroduce and um, take it away again um, I've actually really enjoyed having my body back um, a bit more and not having a little one sort of clambering over me and think that my boobs are hers um, which might sound like a really weird thing but if you've if you've breastfed and you've breastfed for a long time and you've come out the other side you, you, you do get this kind of strange feeling of no no you can leave my boobs alone now please they are mine <laughs> they are not yours and I really really felt that this morning when she was really trying to sort of get back on and it went out you know she said it had gone she couldn't get any more she was really trying um so it's naturally weaning off which is great um and but she kept trying to get on and she was like nipping nipping me and things like that and I was like no no really I don't want you to do that this is my body um, you know, yes, okay, I've let you have that feed, but right, that's it, it's gone. You know, covered up, these are mine. And I'm actually really looking forward to actually having that stage where she's not constantly grabbing at me now. Um, so that will be nice. So if you are thinking of weaning off breastfeeding, um, expect to have this kind of strange, nice realization that it's, it's okay to um, want to be yourself again, really. Um, the other thing on that, um, I've seen a few people recently who are considering night weaning or needing to night wean for different reasons and I've seen some comments of just go cold turkey, um, get husband to do things, this, that, the other, get dad to do it so you can just do it. That's not the best idea because the whole idea of night weaning is that you wean them off and it's not good for two reasons. One for the baby or the toddler because if they're used to feeds in the night and then suddenly you strip them of that they could be habitual hunger or they could genuinely be hungry uh, if they're not eating great during the day but there's also the factor to consider for yourself if you've been breastfeeding for quite a long time and then you literally overnight decide you're not going to do it anymore you're leaving yourself open to engorgement and infections and all these other things as well so it's it if you can wean off that's going to make it easier for you as well in your body to adjust to those changes. 
Um, so yes, there's loads we've talked about today, but yes, so the nights are getting there, which is brilliant. Um, but what we'd like to say, we those things that we're working with in the night are great for actually putting things in, into place in the day. So everything is like a cycle. We're not just fixing one thing, we're actually making improvements throughout because we understand what her, <coughs> her level of understanding is now as well. Um, it's a big thing. It's not just about sorting the sleep. So you'll probably get loads more bits of information from me um, on this journey that isn't just about how the night went and um, that's gonna help you on your journey with your toddler as well. Uh, let me know how you're getting on. If you need help, you know where I am, babytosleep.co.uk. Um, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I'm, I'm feeling it. I feel it in my waters now that that, that full night is nearly here. I really can feel it. Um, let's just hope we get there before she decides that she's not staying in the cot anymore because that will not be good. <laughs> right, I'll see you later. Bye.